Hey everybody and welcome back to Twin Cherry Studio and today I'm going to show you how to install RetroArch and play retro games on your Xbox Series S and Series X and Xbox One for free on the retail side of the Xbox, meaning you don't have to pay the $20 to activate the dev mode like we did in the last video. Now before we start, I am installing this on my old Xbox One using an old Xbox account. The process is exactly the same on the Series S and X due to the dashboards now being exactly the same. And the reason I am doing this is because by installing this, you are breaking Xbox TOS and you do risk a ban on your account and your Xbox. I haven't heard of anyone getting banned for this, but I take no responsibility if you follow this guide and something goes wrong. You do this at your own risk. Now that's out of the way, hit that like button if this video helps you. Consider subscribing to the channel for more emulation tutorials and retro gameplay. And let's just dive into the video. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is on the Xbox, we need to go to the browser Microsoft Edge and open that up. Once that's opened up, you're gonna to want to go to the address bar and type in HTTPS colon back slash slash gamer, spelt with G-M-G-A-M-R 13 dot github dot I-O and that will be in the description down below. You need to do this on the Xbox and press go. That's gonna bring you to this page here with a bunch of apps that are on there. We've got PPS, PP Gold, Duck Station, Flycast, and even Cody and things like that. But what we're focusing on today is RetroArch emulation. So we need two programs from this. The first one is RetroArch. So we go and click on the bit where it says download app. Click always allow and click open. Then it will bring you to a Microsoft Store page. Click the bit where it says get for free and then click got it and press B to back yourself out into the browser again. Now, the second one that we want is Durango FTT, FTP, which is the program that we also use in dev mode. And this is how we're going to transfer our games and files and stuff over to the Xbox. So once that opens up, once again, click get for free and then click got it. Then back out of that and we just wait for those to install. RetroArch itself is a 1.7 gigabyte folder and FT, Durango FTTP is much smaller than that. So once RetroArch is finished, Durango should be finished pretty swiftly after that. Once that's finished, go back to the dashboard and then just find the RetroArch folder and click it and start the RetroPie app. That'll fire it up and we just need to do a couple of config things to make it run a lot better. So we go to online updater and just as last time we update the assets and we update everything here so that we make sure that everything here is up to date. The most important one there is to update is the assets so that the menu doesn't look as janky as it does here. That'll just give all these like HD uh, text and the font and stuff like that will all start to appear so once that's finished you'll see it flash i'm going to back out of that while that updates and the next thing we're going to want to do is go to the settings scroll down to the bit where it says video there's my assets updating go to synchronization and turn on automatic frame delay that's going to help with input delay and things like that and then go to bilinear filtering you can turn that on or off if you want that's just going to add some extra blur to soften some hard edges and then you can turn into just scaler on or off. That is a massive preference one that if you want the games to be full screen, then you're going to want that off. But if you want them to be pixel perfect when it's scaling, turn that on and you'll have some black bars on your screen when you're playing games. And then we're going to want to go down to user interface, click menu item visibility, scroll all the way down and when it says show explore, turn that off. And I like to turn off favorites, images, and music, and stuff like that as well. Then we're going to want to go to the input section, scroll down to the hotkeys, where it says hotkey, and then we want the menu toggle controller combo. So this is going to allow you to bring up the retro arc menu during the game. I usually set that to start and select, but you can choose any combination you want there, whatever works for you. 
Then finally, we go to the configuration file and save the current configuration and quit out of RetroArch. Now we go to Durango FTP. It's then going to show you the addresses of the device. It's shown me a bunch of IP stuff there that I've blocked out. But the important thing is that I'm using the Xbox One, so it's going to be Xbox One on the FTP server. If I was using the Xbox Series S or Series X, it would just be Xbox. Now, when I did this on Xbox Series X, the FTP server did allow me to use Anonymous, but for some reason, when I was using the Xbox One, one, it didn't allow me to use the anonymous section on here. So I had to set a password, which was just FTP and the password was FTP as well. And then I click start to start the server. I'm gonna move over to my PC and type in FTP colon backslash backslash and then insert one of the addresses there so for the xbox series s i type in xbox the one that works for the xbox one was ftp colon slash slash xbox one dot local and that allowed me in i put in the pass username and password ftp ftp there and that brought me into the local files once in the local files i choose the local folder double click on that which will then I need to find the retro arc. So it's the gamer13.retro arc folder. Go inside that. Then we're going to want to find the local state folder. And we're going to make a new folder to put our games in if we're going to play them off the SSD. So create a new folder, call it games. And I'm just going to pop a game in there. I'm going to pop in Banjo Kazooie on the N64 because it's a really quick game to copy over otherwise if i was going to copy all my games over it would probably take a couple of hours because it's on an ftp server so it's all going across the internet which is why i use a usb drive for this once that's in there i'm going to come out of that stop the ftp server on the xbox and we can start to load up some content and play some games so we need to reopen RetroArch, and if you get this message where it says something has gone wrong, then what you're going to want to do is to quit back out of RetroArch and start it again. So otherwise, it's not going to be able to play your content. That's the problem that I ran into here. So now we need to find our games directory, and it was the one that has the U users, user managers, and things like that. And you'll find all the things on there. It may be on S on your Xbox Series S or X, or it may be on Q. Sometimes it, it depends where the magical file system fairy decides to put it. To find out where it is, you go to the directory here and you find out which what the letter of the drive is that's like more dominant there. So that one was U. So I'll go back to it and there it is, U. Scroll down, N64, click Banjo-Kazooie and fire that up. Once I plug in a USB drive, if I've not used it before, I want to make sure that I click that media section and then we need to find the USB drive and on the retail version, it is always on D, whereas on the dev mode, it is on the E drive. And then I go through, find my games and launch them up. First game we're gonna launch, I'm just gonna show you Super Mario 64 real quick on Mupin Plus 64, or Mupin 64 Plus, and then that's running from the hard drive there. And then finally, as we close out this video, I'm going to show you the Banjo-Kazooie on N64. And like, as you can see here, I'm pressing start and select to go into this menu to mess around with a couple of settings, get it up and running. And that's it, really. That's everything. It's much quicker than it is to install on dev mode. But like I said, you are doing this at your own risk. I'm going to take absolutely no responsibility if at some point Microsoft decides to crack down on this method because what we are doing is we're basically side loading apps and that's something that goes against their terms of service that's why I did it on my Xbox one and that's why I did it on a throwaway Xbox account so it's completely up to you if you want to take that risk if this video has helped you then please hit that like button if you're new here and you want to see more content I'm going to be going through all the different cores on RetroArch. I'm going to go through Dolphin probably to start because that's the one that I'm most familiar with. I'll go through the PCSX2 one because I've used that before and I've learned how to make them games look and run fantastic. So hopefully that translates over to RetroArch as well. And I'll go through PS1, N64, things like that. All the things that I've already done on RetroPie showing you how to get the best out of this console and this uh, emulating emulation machine. I'm going to be testing it to its absolute limit. And if you want to see me play some of these games, I'm going to be doing that on twitch.tv forward slash Twin Cherry Studio. And I'll probably do some streaming on YouTube as well because it's just much easier 
uh, these less ads and things like that on YouTube. I don't know. I just don't like Twitch too much at the minute. So I'll probably stream on YouTube. Well, I may stream on Twitch as well. So with all that being said, I've said like and subscribe. I've said everything else. Let me know down in the comments if this video has helped you out or let me know if there's any questions you have about this. And remember, don't do anything I wouldn't do.